What's up guys, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at the classic flat picking tune, Elzik's Farewell. When I first heard this tune I thought, what a unique arrangement this is, really, for guitar. I mean, if you look online you'll find that there's a ton of different versions of this song. And I think I was watching a Michael Davies version of this where he was playing it live and he said, you know, I've never heard this song played the same way twice. What I can tell you is that there's three parts, there's an A part, a B part and kind of a C part or a bridge and in this lesson I really wanted to capture the unique interaction between the rhythm and the melody or the lead part. So the lead part for the song in this lesson is going to be played out of capo 3 which is one of Norman Blake's favorite capo positions and then the rhythm part is actually going to be played out of capo 1 which gives it just a, a really unique kind of flow and, and sort of tonal range across the rhythm and the, the lead parts for this song. And this is what Nancy Blake does if you look up, you know, th th this great version that they, they do of Elzik's Farewell, Norman and Nancy Blake. Um, you can see that she's actually playing the chords out of capo one. And there's some really, really cool kind of bass walk downs and walk ups that you can do when you're playing chords out of capo one that just sound so cool over over this melody. But it's definitely a little bit more on the intermediate advanced side, but it's just, it's such a cool song and I, I really enjoyed learning this a lot. So we're gonna be learning the melody out of capo three. So grab your capo, throw it on the third fret, and then later on in the lesson, we'll learn kind of this special backup part out of capo one. So I hope you enjoy this one and let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at measure number one now of Elzik's Farewell. So measures one through four are going to be considered the A part for this lesson. And what we've got here is we've got a pickup measure. We've got two notes, the third fret to the fifth fret A string. And this is going to be a slide up. And I like to do this slide up on a downstroke with my ring finger. And that slide up is going to come on the and. Okay, so we're going to slide up with our ring finger from the 3rd fret A to the 5th fret A. And then we're going to play a downstroke on the open D, followed by a downstroke on the 5th fret A again. So we're actually playing all downstrokes at this point. And then from here, we're going to play a downstroke on the open D to the 3rd fret D, and we're going to start kind of doing our alternating picking at this point. Okay, so after you play those two down strokes after the slide, you're gonna play open D to third fret D to open G. And I like to do that with my index finger, so we're sliding in with our ring finger. We're playing those two down strokes, and then with our index finger, we're gonna play the open D to 3rd fret D to open G. Okay, so you'll see that open G there comes over the G chord, and we're going to play that on an 8th note. 
And then we're going to play open G to second fret G to open G. And again, that's with our index finger again. I just find it easier to play it that way. Okay, and then from there, you'll see that third fret D to open G. And I like to do that with my middle finger, just kind of keeping my hand in the same position here that I was just playing out of. Okay, and then from there, right in between measures one and two, you're gonna see a hammer on from the fourth fret D to the fifth fret D. And that's gonna be on an up stroke because we're kind of getting away from these double down strokes and we're moving more into alternating picking at this point. Okay, and that hammer on there is gonna lead us into measure number two. Okay, and looking at measure number two now, this what you'll notice about this A part here, and specifically these first two measures, is that the timing is really important, the syncopation. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play this, this hammer on from the fourth fret D to the fifth fret D on an upstroke. And then we're gonna play a downstroke on that open G. And this is sort of the beginning of a theme that's developing here with the A part. And that is sort of, you know, using open strings a lot. We're sort of doing the same thing here. So that first hammer on on an upstroke between the fourth and the fifth fret D. And then that downstroke on the open G. And then from here, we're gonna play another downstroke. And we're just gonna repeat that, those same notes, except without the hammer on. Okay, and right where that open G is right there, we're gonna switch with our index finger down to the second fret, and we're gonna play open G to second fret G to open G. Kind of similar to what we did in measure number one. And then again, just like we did in measure number one, we're gonna play that third fret D with our ring finger. And on this, you'll notice we're going from the third fret D to the open D. And what I like to do here, and this is add a little bit of a string bend. And this is a way that you can kind of add a little bit of subtlety and depth to your playing is, is by throwing in those little string bends. And it just adds a little bit of dimension as opposed to if you were just playing it flat, like that. So if you were gonna play it with the string bend, really all you're doing is you're just sort of applying a little bit of pressure, and you're bending it maybe like a quarter of a step, not even a half step. So it's not a, it's not a really pronounced bend, but it's just enough to kind of extend the vibration of the string and give you a little bit of sort of interest when you go into that open, that open D there. And then right after that third fret D to open D with that little bend that we just learned, we're gonna go back into the slide up again that we had in the pickup at the beginning of measure number one. So that slide up with the ring finger from the third fret D to the fifth fret D. And we're gonna play that the exact same way on a downstroke. Okay, let's play measures one and two now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. leads us into measure number three. Okay, 
right, when we look at measure number three now, it's essentially the same as measure number one in terms of the chords. And this part here is really cool because what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually slide into kind of a little three note chord. And we're gonna do a little bit of cross picking here. So we're gonna slide up from the third fret to the fifth fret A on a down stroke, just like we did in measure number one. And the reason we play that with our ring fingers, so we have our index finger available to us here to kind of add in some extra notes. So we're gonna slide in like we did before with our ring finger on the A string. And then with our index finger, we're gonna play open D to third fret D to open D. So you don't actually have to move the position of your hand, it's already there. You're sliding into that position and you're gonna have your index finger kind of ready to go. Okay, and that's kind of your first move there. And then you're gonna see right when that G chord comes about in the middle of measure number three, you're gonna see actually another slide up from the third fret to the fifth fret A. So it's gonna be the same slide up that we did before. And instead of just sliding up to that single note, we're actually gonna take our index finger and we're gonna place it almost like it's a chord on that third fret D. And we're not actually gonna play it, we're just gonna place it there and get it ready for this little cross picking thing we're gonna do here. And then we're gonna slide in again and you'll notice that that slide in, instead of being on a down stroke, it's actually on an up stroke in this case. Okay, and then once we slide into that position, that kind of little two note chord, we're actually gonna play another upstroke here on the open G. So we're gonna slide in third fret to fifth fret A, place our index finger down on that third fret D, and then we're gonna pick the open G. So that's kind of the main move there. And that's kind of the toughest move going into that cross picking section there. And I struggled with this when I first learned this song because you're, it's kind of counterintuitive because you're putting your index finger down on this third fret D, but you're not actually playing it right away. What you're doing is you're getting it ready for the rest of the notes that are gonna come after that open G. Okay, and then after we hit that open G on an upstroke, we're gonna play another upstroke on that third fret D, followed by a downstroke on the fifth fret A. So now you're seeing that kind of two note chord shape that we slid into. And we got that index finger on that third fret D. Well, now that's where those notes are gonna come into play here. So you'll notice you're sliding up. You're playing an upstroke on the open G another upstroke on that third fret D, and then a downstroke on the fifth fret A again, followed by an upstroke on the open G. So that's kind of the cross picking pattern there. Okay, and that second open G there on the upstroke, that's gonna be on an eighth note, so there's a slight pause or a slight hold there. And then we're gonna, just gonna play the fifth fret A to third fret D again. So basically the second half of this measure, everything that's over the G chord, you can play by just holding this kind of two note chord here, that fifth fret A with your ring finger, and that third fret D with your index finger. And that fifth fret A to third fret D is gonna lead us into measure number four. Okay, so when we look at measure number four now, we're really looking at the last two notes of measure number three, kind of as a pickup measure in this case. So we're gonna start out here with that same chord shape that we learned in measure number three except this time we're just gonna apply a slightly different cross picking pattern over it. So we're gonna start here on this fifth fret A to third fret D. And this cross picking pattern is, is just really a straightforward 
alternate picking pattern. So there's no double downs. There's nothing tricky going on here. But the timing is important. So you're going to start that fifth fret A and that third fret D right before the beginning or the downbeat of measure number four. And the downbeat of measure number four is going to land on a downstroke on the open G. And then once we reach that open G, the beginning of measure number four, we're just gonna play that same pattern but in reverse, down the register, and then back up. And that pattern kind of repeats itself throughout this whole measure. From there, we're gonna actually go to the G, the open G, to second fret G, to open G. And we're gonna kinda of resolve this measure the same way we did at the end of measure number two. Okay, let's play measures three and four now, all the way through to the metronome. One, Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. All right, let's play the entire A part now, measures one through four, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into measure number five. 